Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations Lesson 31, another power series example. This example is similar to the previous lesson, except instead of having initial values of y at x equals 0, we have the value of y when x equals 1 and the value of y prime when x equals 1. In this lesson, we're going to use power series to solve this initial value problem. This differential equation with the initial conditions y of 1 equals 1.35, y prime of 1 equals minus 0 0.042. So here's some advice about how to approach this problem. If the initial conditions are of the form y of a equals y naught, some number y naught, y prime of a equals y sub 1, then we most likely should look for power series that involves powers of x minus a. So in our particular case, we have ones here, and so we will be looking at a power series in terms of powers of x minus 1. So we're going to be looking for solutions uh, of the form y of x is some constant c0 plus c sub 1 times x minus 1 plus c sub 2 times x minus 1 squared plus on and on. Uh, all the powers, all the terms have powers of x minus 1 in them. Now, why would we want to use powers of x minus 1? Does that make the problem easier for us? Well, actually it does. The initial conditions will help us find C0 and C1 almost immediately. And let's see why. If we look at Y of X is what we just mentioned, uh, this infinite series in powers, terms of powers of X minus one, what happens if we plug a one into this formula? Well, let's see, Y of one would be C0 plus C1 times the quantity one minus one plus C sub two times 1 minus 1 squared, and so on. 1 minus 1, last time I heard, was 0. So y of 1 is going to be c0 plus c1 times 0, plus c2 times 0 squared, plus c3 times 0 cubed, and so forth. All of these terms, except possibly the first term, all these other terms are 0. And so y of 1 then equals c0. But we have this initial condition up here, y of 1 is 1.35. And so how can y of 1 be 1.35 and y of 1 be c0? c0 would have to be 1.35. So we now know what c0 is. If we differentiate this series for y of x, y prime of x, differentiating this just term by term, is going to be c sub 1 plus 2c two, two sub 2 times x minus 1, uh, plus 3c sub 3 times x minus 1 squared, and so forth. So if we look at y prime of 1, that's going to be c1 plus 2c2 two times 0, plus 3c3 three three times 0 squared, plus all the rest of the 0 terms. So y prime sub 1 is going to be, as we just mentioned, this. Uh, but all these terms after the first one are zero. So y prime of one is c1, and we know that y prime of one has to be minus 0.042. So that tells us that c1 has to be minus 0.042. Hopefully now we can see why we looked at an expansion in terms of powers of x minus one. Here's an important fact. If the sum k equals 0 to infinity, c sub k x minus x naught to the k equals 0 for all x in an interval containing x naught, then c sub k equals 0 for all x. In other words, the only way to write a 0 function as a power series is the sum k goes from 0 to infinity, 0 times x minus x naught to the k power. 
all the coefficients would have to be zero. So let's see, we're looking at this differential equation. And so what we're going to do is plug the series y of x equals the sum of the c sub k's x minus 1, that quantity, to the k power into this ordinary differential equation, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, though the right-hand side will remain at 0. The left-hand side of the equation will be a power series in terms of x minus 1 and the right-hand side will be the zero function. The only way a power series can equal the zero function is if all the coefficients in the power series, in this case on the left-hand side, will be zero. We'll simplify this into a few low power terms plus a power series starting with the x minus one quantity squared term. We'll see why this is what we want when we go through the computation and we will find a recurrence relation involving the c sub k's. Once we have the recurrence relation, we can use the initial conditions to, of the initial value problem to find all of the c sub k's, at least computationally using software, and we can actually plot the solution. We are going to get all the functions in this equation in terms of powers of x minus one power series involving x minus one, power series centered at one. So we'll get such a power series for y double prime. We can get that by differentiation of the power series for y. The power series in terms of x minus one for two x here, power series for y prime, power series for x square, and a power series for y. And on the right hand side, a power series for the zero function which is just the power series where all of the coefficients are zero. Considering this ordinary differential equation, uh, y double prime plus two xy prime minus x square y equals zero. If we're going to expand uh, the solution as a power series in powers of x minus one, we need to get everything in terms of x minus one and powers of x minus one. So what we'll do is use the fact that we can rewrite x, which appears here, for instance, and appears here in the x square, as the quantity x minus one plus one. And we can think of this as a plus b, where the a is x minus one, the b is one, and then when you want to figure out, for instance, what x squared is, you're going to square this. And that will be the same as squaring the binomial a plus b, where a is this stuff and b is one. So for instance, up here, if we think of two x as p of x, um, it's, as we just said, it's two times x, but x is x minus one plus one. And so we can write this then as two times this stuff, two times x minus one, plus two times the second uh, term, one. And so then we have two x, two times the quantity x minus one plus two. Q of x similarly is, if we think of this as Q of x up here, x squared, we can write that as x minus one plus one squared and then use the formula for squaring a binomial. So this will be x minus one quantity squared plus two times the quantity x minus one plus one. And using that in this differential equation up here, we can rewrite this differential equation as y double prime plus the quantity two times x minus one plus two times y prime minus x minus one squared plus two times x minus one plus one. In other words, the square of a binomial. And that's multiplied by y. And for the differential equation, this has to equal zero. So this is a differential equation in the function y of x. So this is the differential equation we're trying to solve. 
using power series. So in this case, what is y double prime going to be? Well, if you differentiate y twice with respect to x, term by term in the power series for y, you get the sum k goes from 2 to infinity, k times k minus 1 times c sub k times x minus 1 to the k minus 2 power. And then that can be re-indexed to go from 0 to infinity uh, and just replace k by k plus 2, replace k minus 1 by k plus 1. This becomes c sub k plus 2, and this becomes x minus 1 to the k. Now, the k equals 0 term is 2 times 1 times c sub 2 times this to the 0. So that's just 2c sub 2. The k equals 1 term. When you plug in 1 for the k, you'll find it's 6 c sub 3 x minus 1 plus and then the rest of the terms in this going from 2 to infinity so here's the k equals 0 term the k equals 1 term and then the rest k equals 2 3 4 5 and on up so now let's look at the 2 times x times y prime term in this differential equation remember our initial value problem gives us initial values for y of 1 and y prime of 1. So what we're going to do is to rewrite this in terms of powers of x minus 1. Well, first of all, 2x we can write as 2 times, and then this stuff is x, x minus 1 plus 1. So we're going to use the distributive law on this. We'll have 2 times this stuff. 2 times x minus 1 plus 2 times 1, which is here. And so that becomes 2 times x minus 1 plus 2. So 2x equals this stuff. So 2xy prime equals what? Well, this is what we found for 2x. And here is y prime. We could start this sum k going from 1 to infinity if we wanted to. So then we look at this, and let's multiply this out. This factor times this sum is going to be the sum k goes from 1 to infinity, 2 times k times c sub k times x minus 1 to the k. Remember that x minus 1 times x minus 1 to the k minus 1 gave us, for instance, x minus 1 to the k here. Plus, then we have 2 times this series, and I'll just bring that factor of 2 inside here. And so then when we look at this, this sum starts with 1. This sum starts with 1. The y double prime that we found earlier, we had sums starting with k equals 2. So let's rewrite this where the sums start at k equals 2. And we'll have some uh, terms coming outside. The In this sum right here, the k equals 1 term is right here. And then the rest of the terms, k equals 2 to infinity. So the sum from 1 to infinity is the sum where k equals 1, the term where k equals 1, plus the sum where k goes from 2 to infinity. Now, when we look at this next one, we're going to do something similar. First of all, we're going to change this sum to a 2 to infinity also, but we're going to do it the following way. When k equals 1, what do we have here? We have 2 times 1 times c sub 1 times x to the 0, so that's 2 c sub 1. When k equals 2 in this series up here, we get 2 times 2 times c sub 2, which is 4 c sub 2, x minus 1 to the 2 minus 1 power, which is just x minus 1. The rest of the terms in this, we can write as the sum k equals 2 to infinity, 2 times k plus 1, c sub k plus 1, times x minus 1 to the k. Let's see why that's true. Remember that we have in this sum right here, the k equals 1 term, the k equals 2 term. So what's left here, up here at least, would be k equals 3 to infinity of this stuff. If I want to change this to a 2 to infinity instead, 
I would have to replace these k's with k plus 1's all the way through, and that's what we have here. The sum k equals 3 to infinity of this stuff equals the sum k equals 2 to infinity of this stuff. So let's look at the x square y term in this differential equation. x square we saw could be written in terms of x minus 1's this way, basically uh, polynomial in the term in the factor x minus 1, and then it's times y. And y, remember, was this series. And then we just use the distributive law. We have this plus this plus this all times this factor here. And so x minus 1 squared times this infinite series is the sum k goes from 0 to infinity, c sub k, x minus 1 to the k plus 2. 2 times x minus 1 times this series is 2 times this stuff, where we just have a k plus 1 here instead of a k. And then we have plus 1 times this infinite series, which is that infinite series itself. Now, on this first one, we can re-index it so that we have, instead of k plus 2, we have a k here. So let k go from 2 to infinity, c sub k minus 2, x minus 1 to the k. Then take the k equals 0 term out of this, and that's going to be 2 c naught times x minus 1 to the first power. And then we'll have the sum, 2 times the sum, k goes from 1 to infinity of this stuff. And we'll re-index that to be 2 times the sum, k goes from 2 to infinity of x to the k minus 1, x minus 1 to the k. And then on this next series, let's take out the k equals 0 term, which is right here. Take out the k equals 1 term, which is right here. And then we have the rest of the terms. Sum k goes from 2 to infinity, c sub k, x minus 1 to the k. If you look at this, all of these series now go from 2, k equals 2, to infinity. And they all have a factor of x minus 1 to the k in them. It'll make that, those easy to combine together in one sum. So here's what our ordinary differential equation becomes when we plug in the quantities for the three terms that we had. We have that this times x minus 1 to the 0 plus all of this times x minus 1 to the first power plus the sum where k goes from 2 to infinity all of this stuff times x minus 1 to the k equals 0. We see now why we had things the way that we did earlier. We wanted to have a term corresponding to x minus 1 to the 0, a term corresponding to x minus 1, a factor of x minus 1 to the first power, and then all of the others are x minus 1 to the k factors, where k starts at 0 and goes to infinity. Now, if all of this stuff equals the zero function, then every coefficient of x minus 1 must be zero. So that means that this stuff has to be zero, this stuff has to be zero, and this stuff right here, this coefficient of x minus 1 also has to be zero. So after substituting the power series, into our ordinary differential equation, what we get is this stuff. Uh, this constant plus this constant times x minus 1 plus the sum k goes from 2 to infinity. This constant plus this constant plus this constant minus this constant minus this constant minus this constant times x minus 1 to the k equals 0. 
remember that here we have a big constant uh, times x minus 1 to the k. By big, I mean it has a lot of terms. It's kind of long to write out. k goes from 2 to infinity. So this infinite series right here starts with x minus 1 squared. We have the x minus 1 to the 0 power here. We have x minus 1 to the first power over here. OK, so now let's remember that from the initial value problem, the initial conditions uh, turned out to indicate that C0 had to be 1.35, C sub 1 had to be minus 0.042. So looking at, uh, remember this infinite series equals 0. So each of these coefficients, this one, this one, and this long one, for instance, for all k greater than or equal to 2 in this case, have to be 0. So uh, what we get then is by looking at this term here, 2c sub 2 plus 2c sub 1 minus c0 equals 0. So c sub 2 has to be c0 minus 2c sub 1 divided by 2. Plugging these numbers in, we find out that c sub 2 is 0 0.7170. Moving on to the x minus 1 term, this coefficient of x minus 1 has to be 0, and that's what we have written here. And we're going to solve this equation for c sub 3. And so we get 6c sub 3, and now we have 2c sub 1 minus c sub 1. So those combine to give us plus c sub 1, plus 4c sub 2, minus 2c naught equals 0. So subtract these terms from both sides, divide by 6, and we get that c sub 3 is 1 sixth times this stuff. These numbers we already know. Plug them in, we get c sub 3 is about minus uh, 0 0.021. Looking at the coefficient of x minus 1 to the k in this infinite series gives us that that coefficient has to be 0 for all k greater than or equal to 2. And solving this for c sub k plus 2, just a little bit of algebra, uh, results in c sub k plus 2 equals this stuff over here. Not a very enlightening formula. However, the known values of C0, C1, and so forth, plus the recurrence relation, allow us to use a program, for instance, a Python program, to plot the solution to that initial value problem. Um, there are going to be two slides on this. The first one shows the main program, and this main program is going to call a function f down here. The next slide is going to show uh, the definition of the function f using Python. So let's look at this uh, for a couple minutes, perhaps. Uh, this program is going to plot the numerical solution uh, by using that power series cut off after 40 terms. Um, we already know the values of C0, C1, C2, and C3. And so in this program, here's what's going to happen. First of all, our series is only going to use 40 terms. That's what this line is going to tell us. Uh, here are the values stored in a list C. This is C0, C1, C2, C3. Then over in this code here, that uh, is a for loop uh, for k in range from 2 to num coefficients, which was 40. In other words, uh, k is going to go from 2 to 39 in this case. Uh, to this list c, we're going to, c has c0, c1, c2, c3, right? We're going to, the first time through this loop, calculate and append c4 to the list. Go through the loop again and compute and append C5, C6, C7, all the way through C sub 39. 
So when this um, loop ends, we'll know all the C's from C sub 0 through C sub 39. And those we're going to use uh, to compute values of the power series for various values of x. So this program next prints C. I'm not going to show you the values of C, but just put it in to check to make sure things are working right. Uh, I'm going to compute also a another loop down here, another for loop. I'm going to compute a list of x values and a list of y values. x sub 0, y sub 0 is going to be a point on the solution curve. x sub 1, y sub 1 will be another point on the solution curve, and so forth. Okay, I'm going to plot 50 points on the graph and join them with straight line segments. It'll look like a curve. Uh, delta x is going to be 2 divided by the number of points, which in this case is 50. Uh, so delta x is 2 50ths, and that's going to be um, the distance between x sub i and x sub i plus 1. What's going to happen is this will give us uh, 50 values of x sub i's, all of those x sub i's uniformly distributed in the interval from 0 to 2. This graph is going to be plotted between 0 and 2. So then we have another loop here, another for loop. It's a little bit longer in its body, I guess. For k in the range, uh, num points, uh, which remember was uh, 40. Um, oh, sorry, here I'm going to use num points being 50. Um, this was num coefficients, wasn't it? Uh, so I'm going to go from 0 to 49 in this case, which is 50 points. X is going to be 0 plus this value of k in the for loop times delta x, and I'm going to append that value of x to x list. I'm going to compute y by looking at f of x, and f of x is computed using that list of coefficients c from our for our infinite series, and I'm also going to tell it how many coefficients are in that infinite series. And then after I compute y equals f of x, I'm going to append that value of y to y list. After this loop uh, terminates, after we go through this loop 50 times, we will plot the values of x versus y. We'll plot x list versus y list. Um, this is going to use a um, plot function that is built into a uh, Python library. We'll see a little bit more about this on the next uh, slide. So basically what we did was we calculated all the C coefficients, C naught through C to the 39. Uh, the function f is uh, defined by a power series. We'll see that on the next slide. But f of xcn is basically the sum k goes from 0 to n minus 1, c sub k times x minus 1 to the k. And then we're going to plot the x versus y values uh, for x between 0 and 2 using a partition of 50 subintervals of equal length in 0, 2. So here's the function that is going to uh, compute this partial sum of an infinite series. Uh, this partial sum will approximately be the solution to that initial value problem. First of all, we're going to import a library. Uh, we're going to, actually we're going to um, import matlab, matplotlib.pyplot and we'll call it just PLT for plot. Um, and here is the function. I'm going to define f, and it has three parameters, x, c, and num coefficients. We'll set sum equal to 0 first. 
when this is called, we'll have a particular value of x. The values of c will be passed to it. The number of coefficients is 40. Uh, this is called by the main program that we already saw. So for a particular value of x, what happens? Uh, we have sum equals 0. And then for n in the range of num coefficients, sum equals sum uh, plus c sub n plus x minus 1 raised to the nth power. And after this loop is finished, after we compute this partial sum, we return sum to the calling program, which we already saw. So this is a small uh, code um, defining this function, just a few lines, one, two, three, four lines of code uh, in this block here uh, to define f. So here's the program that we just saw, both parts of it. Uh, the first part here is importing the library, defining the function f, and then down here is the main program that we saw earlier, which um, computes the values of the coefficients, the c coefficients, uh, fills up the x list and y list with values of x and y, and finally plots it. When we execute this code, uh, this is the curve that we get. And if you remember what we did in the previous le lesson, or if you go back and look at it again, you'll see that there's no apparent difference between the solution to this initial value problem and the initial value problem that we saw in the prior lecture. Um, that is not surprising because in this new initial value problem in this, le in this lesson, lesson 29, uh, we indicated as our initial conditions uh, what the value of y was at x equals 1 and what the value of y prime was at x equals 1. Um, I don't remember what they were right off the bat, uh, but they were pretty small numbers. In fact, we have them over here. y of 1 was 1.35. y prime of 1, which is the slope, is minus 0.042. Uh, so the height of the curve here is about 1.35, and notice that here's 1.4, here's 1.5. Uh, this height right here is about 1.35. Uh, the slope is close to 0, minus 0 0.042, and we can see that the curve here uh, is almost uh, horizontal at that point, x equals 1. Not quite. It looks like it's horizontal, just a little bit to the right of 1. But right at 1, the slope is uh, very shallow, and it's a negative number. So as expected, the graph of this solution uh, looks the same as the solution to what we saw in lesson 28. Considering the differential equation y double prime plus p of x y prime plus q of x y equals zero, what did we learn? If the initial conditions are the form y of a equals y naught, y prime of a equals some number y1, we should look for a power series centered at a, that is, using powers of x minus a. We should substitute y of x is this power series and also a similar power series for p of x and q of x that appear up here into the differential equation and simplify. Use the initial conditions to find the first c values, find recurrence relation to find the rest of the c values, and then if you want to plot it, see what the function, the solution function looks like, we can use SageMath or Python or MATLAB to write a short program to compute a partial sum approximation to the solution and graph it. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you have found it to be an enjoyable learning experience. 
If you're interested in ordinary differential equations, there are additional videos in this series covering most of the topics in an introductory course in ODEs. Have a good day.